Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. I hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the Service Business Mastery Podcast, a podcast focused on service business owners, managers, and technicians who are considering becoming business owners themselves. Today's episode is an exciting one. We have Brigham Dickinson from the Power Selling Pros. Uh, if you've never heard of this organization, you definitely need to check it out. They have tons and tons of, of valuable content uh, that they give away for free. So you can only imagine all the additional content they give if you uh, attend any of their events. But we're, what I'm really excited to talk to you about today is uh, Brigham's book, his new book out, uh, Pattern After Excellence, which is the follow-up book to Pattern for Excellence. So with that being said, I'd like to welcome to the show, Brigham. Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. My pleasure. So tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and, and how you got into doing exactly kind of, or I guess I should say, what do you do and how you got into it? Yeah, well, it was kind of an accident, really. Mm -hmm. I um, was doing some pay-per-click advertising and some SEO advertising, and I was more of a broker. I um, mm -hmm. worked with a couple of ad agencies that provided those services, and I had Interesting. a few contacts, and so those contacts happen to be dealers in the heating and cooling industry. And so I was brokering these uh, services. And so hmm. one of my clients, his name is Troy Nearings, Nearings uh, of Nearings Plumbing and Heating, uh, called me into his office and he said, hey, um, the leads that you are generating through your pay-per-click advertising, uh, well, they're no good. And I said, what do you mean they're no good? <laughs> And he says, well, all they want is a ballpark price and they just want to know what we charge to come out and so on and so forth. And, and it's, it's just not working out for us. And I said, wait a minute, they want a ballpark price. And he said, well, yeah. And they want to know what you charge to come out. Yeah. Okay. So what are they looking for? Something other than a heating and cooling system? Well, no, that's what right. they're looking for. Okay. Well, so why aren't they customers? Well, it's just not as easy to book those. Okay. So let's train our team to book those calls. And he says, all right, who are we going to have train them? And I said, well, I'll do it. <laughs> and so I started uh, training his CSRs, his customer service reps. Mm -hmm. And their call conversion went up 20%. And wow. yeah, it was cool. And so then, uh, funny thing, a couple of weeks later, I got a call from Tom Robichaud. He's the owner of Precision Plumbing Heating and Heating in, in Boulder, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, I hear you're training Troy's uh, CSRs. And I said, yeah, I'm doing his advertising too. And he says, okay, cool. <laughs> but I was wondering if you would like to train my CSRs. I said, well, that sounds great, but I need to do your advertising too. And he says, well, <laughs> I, I want to make sure you're listening to me. I'm, I'm willing to pay you to train right. my CSRs. And then the light bulb came on for me. I was like, oh, he's going ding, ding, ding. to pay me to do it. And so um, I went there and for the first time I got paid to train CSRs and his call conversions went up. And then funny thing, Tom Robichaud and uh, Troy were kind of scheming on how to um, uh, get me involved with other contractors as well because they knew that contractors really needed it. And so they, oh, yes. they came up with this idea to uh, get a hold of Mike Gugliero at Gold Medal. In oh, we're very, very familiar with Mike. Yeah, Mike yeah he's a cool guy. Uh, super successful, but um, uh, so I, I I finally visit Mike, and there's a whole story behind that too. Mm -hmm. I got to decide how much time you've got. Let me tell you real quick. <laughs> good, but, good. So what I do, what I call it is I call it the Hail Mary Pass, and 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 for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, it's 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 a football term. You're at the end of the game. There's only one way to win. You've got to throw that ball into the end zone, and hope somebody on your team catches it. Before mm -hmm. time runs out, winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's the Hail Mary pass. Well, when I uh, was thinking about going to um, uh, New York, I had uh, received a phone call from a family member. And this family member asked me how long I was going to continue in this crazy dream job of mine where <laughs> I don't get paid anything and I've got four kids. And at what point am I going to grow up and stop this crazy dream, right? Mm. Very sweet gal. <laughs> and, and, uh, so I, I was like, well, shoot, you know, I mean, I guess this is it. Cause when I booked my flight to, uh, to New York, I, uh, I didn't have any money. I just put it all on a credit card yeah. and, and Mike wasn't even closed. In fact, back then he was just a lead, you know, it was just a referral from Tom Robichaud and Troy Nearings. 
And so what I did is I called a couple of other companies, one in New York that seemed to be pretty promising, and then one in uh, in uh, Staten Island. Mm-hmm. And so when this uh, uh, family member of mine uh, was talking to me over the phone, she said, what in the heck are you doing? And I, that was the first time I asked myself, well, I don't know, what in the heck am I doing? <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, so I just decided, yeah, this is it. This is my Hail Mary Pass. And so I kind of wrote it down. I said, this... You know, on this day, this date, um, I put everything on a credit card to fly to New York and I got to close at least one of these guys. Mm -hmm. And so um, I get there and I'm working with this guy in New York. Funny thing, he's he's like 45 minutes late to our appointment. He gives me five (laughs) minutes because I made the trip. And and he's off to his next appointment. You know, and I was like, Uh wow, can I cry now? And mm-hmm. so I uh, jumped in the car, went to Staten Island, and after about an hour of meeting with the guy, I realized I wasn't even talking to the decision maker. And I mentioned, oh, no. yeah, it's awesome. I was, I, I, as I was talking to him, I, I remembered um, uh, Jeff Gittimer, famous sales trainer. Mm-hmm. In one of his books, he says, if you can't get a hold of the decision maker, if you can't talk to the decision maker, you suck. And so the first, <laughs> so the first thing that I came suck. to my mind, exactly, first thing that came <laughs> to my mind was, man, I suck. And then, uh, so, uh, then I, I, I went, uh, over the bridge to, to, uh, uh, New Jersey and, and stopped it in, in, uh, East Brunswick and, and visited gold medal, talked with them for a while and, and they weren't ready to sign either. And so I went to the hotel completely empty handed, you know, and oh, deflated. Oh, it was awful. And so anyway, mm-hmm. I wake up the next day, I'm packing my clothes to get on the plane and, and I'm just kind of looking at my, uh, at this luggage, right. Going, Jesus, is this really how this is going to end? And then finally yeah. I, I looked at my flight. My flight wasn't leaving till two o'clock in the afternoon. I said, you know what? There's still time. So I call each one back and the new, the guy in New York didn't give me the time of day, which is you no, know, no shocker there. And yeah. then, uh, I, I was able to talk to the decision maker over the phone in Staten Island. And he said, Hey, let's, let's talk again in a week, which was sweet. In fact, they ended up signing six months later. But then I called Gold Medal back and I said, hey, why don't you come back in? Let's talk some more. I come back in. We talk some more. He signs. Nice. And we're rolling. And about six months later, I'm hiring all my friends. And I don't have a lot of friends. You know, I, <laughs> I hire them all up and, and, and we're rolling. And so um, 10 years later, uh, we are, have a certification program for CSRs. We have uh, uh, almost 850 in the program. Now we put a thousand nice. through the training each, each year. So, so yeah, it's, it's been quite a, quite a ride. That is really cool. So I guess what's, I guess let's, what is it that you're able to offer as far as the wow culture goes? Like what, how are you like, <sighs> there's a lot of people out there that say they are really good at coaching CSRs and like you're getting results from people. Uh, and what, what makes you different than anybody else? Like, I guess, I guess that's my biggest question is why, why should I choose, uh, you over anyone else? Two things come to mind, um, as an answer. Okay. First of all, there's a lot of training companies out there that are going to tell you what to do. They might sit down with the owner or with the uh, Mm -hmm. manager and say, hey, this is what you need to do with your CSRs. And they even they might be very good at telling you what to do. You know, by the time you're done with this full day class or two day class or three day class, you are so motivated, so pumped. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to change this department for the better. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. And you go back to your office and you get <laughs> stuck in the thing that you were doing before, and you've got to take put out all these fires and nothing gets done. Well. What we do is we come in and we do it for you. Not only do we say, hey, this is what we need to do. Um, we're going to go and, and, and uh, work with your team one-on-one over the phone twice a month using their own phone calls. We're going to co- coach them um, and hold them accountable to getting results. We're going to take them through four levels of certification. And by the time we're done, they're going to book at least 85% of their phone calls. And we'll, just give you, we'll just give you your money back. Nice. And that's why, we put a th- yeah, that's why we put a thousand people through the program year in and year out. It's because um, of the results that we get. Now, the other reason why we are as successful as we are is because we use this tool called the Pattern for Excellence. Obviously, both my books that I've written are are called the Pattern for Excellence or Patterned After Excellence. Um, But we teach a set of principles. 
There's a lot of training companies out there that'll give you specific scripts and and outlines and so on and so forth. And and scripts are great, but that's the starting point. That's the launching pad. Our goal is to is to teach them a specific set of principles that'll that'll change the way they talk to the customer. See, our goal is to create equal amounts of challenge towards the customer as well as connection. You got to have both, both challenge and connection. Now, what I mean by that is, is if a customer gets on the phone and they say, hey, I'm looking for a ballpark price. Well, in a, in a very uh, passive way, you want to challenge that question. You want to challenge that rationale. Mm. Um, but at the same time, we want to create a connection. Well, how do we do that? Well, let me give you an example. You got a customer gets on the phone. They say, hey, I'm just looking for a ballpark price. Great. Can you tell me more about your situation? What's going on? Well, I've got this air conditioner and it's blowing hot air. My gosh, that's terrible. How long has it been doing that? Oh, last couple of days. Well, look, we can definitely help you with that. When would you like us to come out? Oh, this afternoon would be good. What just happened there? Mm. Yeah, that, that empathy that you, you created there. <clears throat> uh, you got that, that call booked. Yeah. Yeah, it was a ballpark price that they were looking for in the beginning, but in the end, they realized through the challenge questions that I had and the connection that I created through empathy, and you absolutely noticed that. And what's the challenge question? It's, well, tell me more about your situation. What's going on? You see, I'm challenging that rationale. I'm saying, what, what exactly are you looking for? And let's say they push back after that. They say, you know what? I'm really just looking to get an idea as to what this is going to cost. Completely understand. Here's what we do. What we do is we send out a technician. He comes out, he takes a look at the situation, he determines exactly what you need fixed, and he gives you a price before he starts. When would you like us to come out? Yeah, I like that. And then it's the I think the I think one of the biggest problems that not just CSRs or anybody that's answering the phone, even service experts and um and salespeople, comfort consultants, whatever you want to call them, uh, is asking for that close, asking for the, you know, when can we come out versus leaving it super open ended. Yeah. Yeah. And let's say they push back again. They say, you know, really, are you saying, maybe at this point they say, you know what, are you saying you can't give me a price? Right. And you say, here's the thing. If I were to give you a price over the phone, we come out, look at the situation and determine it's something completely different. Uh, and we end up giving you a different price. Are you going to be okay with that? Because hmm. nine times out of ten, that's what happens. Let's say they they think it's something specific. Well, you know what? It's, it's the it's the compressor. I know it's the compressor. Cool. If we come out and we find out it's not the compressor that you need replaced, would you be surprised by that? Well, yeah, I'd be really surprised. Why don't you let us come out? Let yeah. us come out, take a look at the situation. If it is the compressor, we'll give you a price on that. If it's something else, we'll give you a price on that. When would you like us to come out? You see, I'm not saying no. I'm just staying focused on us coming out. Yes, absolutely. Do you ever, in, in your thought process, do you ever waive that initial consultation fee? Or um, what's your, I guess, what's your thoughts on that? It really depends on how busy I am. Okay. If I've got, um, if I'm booked up for, say, three or four days, I'm going to use a completely different strategy with this customer. Okay. But if, I, if I'm not booked up, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll take them through each of those sets, right? I'm not mm -hmm. going to even talk about the price until I get to the – until I've listened, cared, reassured, asked the right questions, created value. I'm not going to get into a price at all. And the reason why that is, is is I need to make sure they know that we're the right people, that independent of our price, they've called the right place. We are 911. Mm -hmm. There's no 912. Help us on the way. So gotcha. you've got to follow each of those principles first before you start talking about price. Because if they like me, guess what? The price doesn't matter. Right. Me, me not being able to come out today versus tomorrow, it doesn't matter as much if they like me. So I need to do that first. I need to create the connection, that emotional connection first, um, and also have those challenge questions to help them to help them realize that their rationale is kind of off in a very respectful and uh, passive way. So say we get to the price now, right? I've done all those things right. I've listened, I've cared, um, built value. Customer gets on the customer says at this point, okay, well, w what do you charge to come out? Well, we charge, we build value and you say we charge X, right? Oh, well, I don't want to pay that, which never happens, right? Nobody, mm -hmm. of course it happens, <laughs> happens all the time. Right. 
Mr. Jones, is it just the fee that you're concerned about? Well, yeah, I don't want to pay it. So if it weren't for the fee, you'd move forth the appointment. Is that right? That's right. Okay. So right there, I've just gotten two yeses. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm looking for. They started out with no, I'm not going to pay that. Now I got to switch their mindset from no to yes. And I do that by asking those questions. So if it weren't for this, you'd move forward. Yes. Okay, cool. So there's one thing that I can do. Um, and, and we don't ever do this, but I feel, I really feel like we can help you. And I want you to experience the difference between our company and, and, and your, your average company. So, uh, even though we never do it, I'm going to go ahead and waive it this one time, uh, to get a technician out there and get you taken care of. Now, mm -hmm. if I do that, is that enough for you to move forward with the appointment? You see, even then it's not free. It's contingent upon them moving forward with the appointment. And you always want to set it up that way. So they see that there's value there. Mm -hmm. Um, some people like to say, Hey, let me put you on a brief hold and talk to my manager, uh, just for the sake of credibility, you know, cause if you could offer me the, the dispatch fee for free in the first place, why don't you just offer that? Yeah. So your goal here is to work towards credibility and, and explain the value that's involved. Gotcha. Um, before I get to that though, there's definitely other things that we can do. Mr. Jones, is it just the fee that you're concerned about? Yeah, I don't want to pay it. So if it weren't for the fee, you'd move forward the appointment. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, there is a coupon online. Um, I'm not going to make you go there. In fact, you don't have to present anything to your technician. I'm just going to put in your notes you're taking advantage of this coupon, and it'll help subsidize the cost of the dispatch fee once you move forward with the work. Is that enough for you to move forward with the appointment today? Nice. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So there's tons oh, yeah. of ways to do it. You could even sell a service agreement. Mr. Jones, is it just the fee that you're concerned about? Yeah, it's just that. It's just the fee. So if it weren't for the fee, you move forward with the appointment. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, there is something we can do. It's an alternative. It's a service agreement. What we do is we come out in the spring, we come out in the fall, we make sure it's running at peak efficiency. You see what it does is it helps prevent things like this, the thing that you're dealing with right now, from happening. If I were to do that, get you on the service agreement, as opposed to having you pay the dispatch fee, uh, would that be enough for you to move forward the appointment today? And now we're selling service agreements as opposed to you know, worrying about a dispatch fee. Right. <laughs> See, here's what happens is we get so focused on the dispatch fee, uh -huh. we determine whether or not that's a customer based on whether or not they want to pay for that. That's a good point. Yeah. Time it, out. It, it's definitely something that we, we hyper focus on. Yeah. And we shouldn't. We shouldn't. They own a home. Right. That means they're paying a mortgage. Mm -hmm. They probably have a car, which means they're paying a car payment, which, which means, and, and, and as a side note, You've been out in a customer's home. Even when they say they don't have money, if they like you and they want to work with you, don't they find the money? Yeah, they'll find it somewhere. Yeah, their mom, their parents, their friends. If they like you enough, they will find the money. You know it. I know it. So <laughs> we've got to be very, very careful about uh, the uh, cherry picking um, over the phone. In fact, if it's me, I don't do it at all. I'm going to train the CSR to book every phone call that comes in. And I take the good with the bad as a technician, a sales technician or a comfort advisor. I'm going to mm -hmm. take the good with the bad and I'm going to stay busy. The minute you give restrictions on your CSRs is the very minute your call conversion is going to go down. Yeah, I believe it. hundred percent. Don't do it. Don't. Yeah, do it. I agree. Cause then, then they can decide and then it might be based on their mood versus an actual, like they just might not feel like dealing with that person that day. Yeah. Huh. That's really cool. I like it. A lot of what you said is a lot of stuff that we've been trained, uh, personally, and I like it because it, it really aligns with, um, a lot of, a lot of what we've, we've been trained uh, here recently, especially, but, uh, what, what would you say when it comes to, um, using a framework versus using scripts when you're, when you're training CSRs? When a customer gets on the phone, and let's say that you do some plumbing work too, mm -hmm. and they, they happen to bring up their garbage disposal. And if you're following a script, you may not know how to connect with them on an emotional mm -hmm. level. But if, if you can say, okay, here's a script. This is a launching pad though. I want you to go beyond the script. I want you to use your personality. I want you to be able to connect with them on an emotional level using these, this set mm -hmm. of principles, right? Then you'll hear things like, you know, you never know you need a garbage disposal until it goes out. <laughs> and then the customer's like, right. I know, right? It's so crazy. I don't even think about it. And we hear calls like that all the time where you're, before you fix anything at all, you can make them feel better. 
You know, and what, our goal here is to recognize the emotions the customer is feeling when they get on the phone. The last thing they want to do is give their name, address, and phone number for you to help carry that emotional mm -hmm. angst that they're feeling. And so they get on the phone and they say, hey, I've got this air conditioner that's blowing hot air. My mother-in-law is living with us. You know, um, She just had hip replacement and she's sitting around and she's super cranky and <laughs> yeah. she can't go without AC. You know what I mean? <laughs> Happens all the time. What What am I looking for when I'm describing all this? You, you want that empathy. You, you know, want to uh, share that. Definitely that. Share that burden. Yeah, exactly. And when you don't, um, you're missing an opportunity to connect with them on an emotional level. And, and so um, that's not in a script. I mean, can you imagine that one thing, that one part being in a script? You, you never know you need a uh, garbage disposal until it goes out. And it it just like doesn't work. It doesn't work. You know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't work. I, I was on a. I, I was in uh, Columbus, Ohio, training a, uh, a team of CSRs that were a little uncomfortable selling service agreements over the phone. So I rearranged my flight uh, to fly out the next day mm -hmm. and answered phones with them. It was super fun. So sold three service agreements over That's the phone cool. in two hours. It was really cool. Yeah, but while <laughs> I on what, yeah tuning my own horn <laughs> as I. <laughs> As I was talking to one of the customers within the first five seconds, she she's like, oh my gosh, you are awesome. And I said, am I now? We haven't said anything at all. And she says, well, I'm feeling better already. I'm like, wow, already <laughs> fixed. I'll, I'll send you a bill. And, right. and she loved it, right? She didn't care what the price was. You know, by the time I was done, she had bought a service agreement. It was amazing. That's really cool. And that's your goal. You know, people will feel better when you are able to connect with them on an emotional level. And that's, that's the objective of the pattern for excellence is to follow a set of principles, master them in the way that you communicate and connect with others. So that by the time you're done, they don't care. They don't care. It's the dispatch yeah. fee is 500 bucks. Sweet. <laughs> you want my credit card? They feel better about being, you know, having you come to their home. And that's a concern with, with, um, service companies anyways, like, I don't know who these people are. I've never met, met them before. And yet I'm going to allow them to come into my home to, uh, look at all of my stuff. I'm very vulnerable at the same time. I'm emotionally a wreck because I am, I am dependent on someone else to come fix my house that I'm unable to fix myself. So you have a lot of emotions involved there. And for that person to be vulnerable enough to trust you to come into their home, uh, it creating that relationship is is a big deal there in my opinion yeah mm -hmm. and listening in general you know i was talking to uh my publisher this morning and there was a a, a remaining amount due and i said i just wanted to pay with my credit card and mm -hmm. she said uh are you sure there's we have to charge a three percent fee at the end are you <laughs> sure you want to do that and in the back of my head, I'm like, are you sure you want to get paid? What, what's going on here? I got to convince you to take my credit card? Yeah. And, and we have a tendency, even though you may be a customer, you are not your customer. Yeah, that's a good point. And, we've, and, and we've, got to, we've got to develop our listening skills to find out what they want, what's important to them. And we've got to be empathetic and we've got to be reassuring so they know that they've called the right place. You know, somebody on that phone call better be sure that they've called the right place. And trust me, it's not the customer. It better be you. Mm -hmm. So, so um, those are things that you don't follow in a script. And that's why we provide the ongoing accountability training, because we could teach you, we could sit here all day and I could just wow you with all these really cool tips and tricks, right? And you'll be like, man, that was so sweet. And you go back to what you're doing before, yep. which is why we hold the CSR's hand metaphorically and coach them twice a month, have them listen to their own phone calls because they already know what to do. They know they should be positive. Yeah. They know they should be confident. They know they should be well-practiced and great listeners and empathetic and all the rest. They know all that stuff. The question is, is how do you bridge the gap between knowing and doing? And the only way we've found is to hold them accountable over time reward them through each level of certification and get them to the point where they're booking at least 85% of their phone calls. We have some CSRs that are booking 100% of their phone calls for, you know, six weeks straight. Wow. Every phone call comes in, they're booking it and they're indispensable to that organization. And it's because we're providing the ongoing accountability to do it. So 
Yeah, you really have to you have to have your marketing on point for that to uh, weed out those telemarketers and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, Get that percentage up that high. That's really cool though. Um, we that's something that we have. Um, we do really good at at booking. Our booking percentage averages stay stays between eighty eight and ninety percent. But um, it's definitely something where when you go back and listen to your conversations, um, you can definitely tell if you've had an off day. Uh, it's it's the worst thing in the world knowing before you even start listening to the conversation that you weren't in the best of mind set whenever you took that phone call because you know that you're going to listen to it and you're going to critique all kinds of things. And you, when you listen to your own conversation, you can critique it a lot more, even more so than someone else's conversation too. Yeah. And as an owner, I would highly suggest you don't listen to phone calls on Fridays. <laughs> They're going to ruin your weekends. Ruin your weekend. And I wouldn't do it on Monday either. That's a good hey, point. Hey, let's start the week out this way. I don't think so. That's a great point. Yeah. That's yeah. a, that's a good fact, way to ruin a week. Yeah. And if it were me, I've got a team of call monitors that'll do it for you and never have to listen to a phone call again. Just know that it's fixed. It's done. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely like saving the heartache version of a uh, portion of listening to that phone call is worth whatever you're charging for that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Consider, consider all the expenses, no psychiatrist, no, <laughs> <laughs> all the no methods. messing with your relationships. <laughs> yeah, totally. Cool. Yeah. Well, if somebody wants to, to really dive in and learn more about you and get more information on how they can, take you up on those offers where, where do they connect with you or your business? What's the best place? Just go to, yeah, just go to power selling pros.com P O P O W E R S E L L I N G P R O S.com. And, uh, it's cool. There's some videos and stuff on there that'll, that'll give you more information and you just fill out a form, um, on the, uh, chat bot there on the website and we will be reaching out to you shortly. Awesome. Cool. Well, I look forward to it. I look, I hope that a lot of people take advantage of this, um, these, this program that you have, because it's a really, I mean, just the things that you've even mentioned here in this episode, a lot of the stuff is stuff that we implement, but it wasn't until we implemented these things that we started finding some success with getting our call percentages, uh, increased. And, um, so I hope that everyone out there in the, in the podcast world will take, take advantage of this for sure. Um, and me, then me al too. also don't forget to check out your books. What, what's the name of both of your books again? Okay. So the first book is called uh, pattern for excellence and it's about engaging your team to wow more customers. It's a fantastic book. It's also my first book. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I don't know what that means, except that my <laughs> second book is 10 times better than, <laughs> than my first book. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Both books are great, you know, but, yeah. but, uh, the first book will help you, uh, engage your team to wow more customers and, and you can get into the meat of, of some of the things that we teach from a principal standpoint. Um, the reason why I like teaching principles is because um, I found that they're a whole lot more successful than, than studying behavior. When you study behavior, you know, you've probably, you and I talked about all the podcasts we listen to, all the audiobooks, uh -huh. right? We're, you know, we're flexing each other, flexing our muscles and dude, we're amazing. You know, uh -huh. we listen to so many books. Uh, oh, yeah. But there, the, the question is, is how much do we implement from the books we listen to or read? Absolutely. Yeah, not much, not right, much at all. Right. And so you have to be it's very, funny. very, very diligent to stay on top of it. Like Profit First, whenever I listened to it and read it, it was like the third or fourth time I listened to it before I actually implemented all the procedures in there. And even then, I had to stay after the fact. I had to, you know, follow through with some programs of, of Profit First through Mike's. Uh, and that's whenever I really started implementing stuff. But you could listen to stuff, other stuff like Good to Great all the day long. But if uh, it's implementing that is not always easy. It's easier said than done. Right. And it makes it even worse when you have books that contradict themselves. For example, in Profit <laughs> First, it talks about how you should pay yourself first, right? Okay, yeah. cool. I'm going to pay myself first, but then how do I pay, uh, you know, my, my team salaries? And then you've got to figure out how to make that work. And then you read Simon Sinek's book who says – uh, leaders, leaders eat, eat last, last. Yeah. and then you go. Wait a minute, here. nobody's supposed to first or last. First or last. The the, yeah. the but the point I'm trying to make is is that um, there are so many books out there with so much information, and we're constantly studying behavior, and we're and we're and uh, the problem is we're studying behavior to change our behavior, and that does not work 
because all that is, is just work. It's like obligation. Okay, cool. I need to study behavior to change my, you know, if everybody, if everybody would follow, um, a certain diet plan, right. Mm-hmm. To, to, to lose weight. And and what do they do? They study a certain behavior. You know, the, the latest craze right now is fasting. You fast for a certain period of time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've heard of it, but oh, it's yeah. crazy talk. You don't eat till 12 <laughs> and, I, and I gotta be careful. You may already be doing it right. And I've then you, done it before. It's crazy. It did not work for me. But the point here is, is that we constantly study behavior thinking that it'll change our behavior. Well, we have a bunch of overweight people in our country. Why? Because we we think that if we study behavior, it's going to change our behavior. And it's a total lie. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not true. In fact, if we study bad behavior, why would we do that? We were constantly listening to yeah. news, which is what? Bad it's behavior. Bad. Yeah. And, and luckily, we don't follow through on that. But the, the point is this. Instead of studying behavior to change our behavior, we should study truth. Now, the benefit of truth is, is that once we understand it, because you don't create truth, you just discover it. Mm-hmm. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. And, and the reason there's a, there's a point to my madness. I, that's ahead, exactly what my second book is about. But, but, uh, but um, um, truth is, is, is a very powerful thing. Um, because Let me give you an example of a truth. Uh, heart surgeons, when they do heart surgery, um, to stop the heart, they use this potassium chloride uh, uh, liquid and they shoot it through the main arteries. It goes to the heart and immediately, every time, instantaneously, it stops. Every time it works. Mm-hmm. And then they take this potassium, uh, this, uh, this sodium potassium uh, uh, concentrate and they, and they put it right through the main arteries. And every time, instantaneously, it gets the heart beating again. Every time. Now, they didn't create that. Heart surgeons didn't create that. They discovered it. They just discovered it. Mm. It's truth. And, and, it's, and truth's been around long before we were born. It's going to be around long after we're gone. And the reason why this is important is, is because we have had a tendency as of late to refer to truth as our truth. Yeah, very true. As if, as, and, it's, and it sounds so nice, right? Yeah. Like, oh, this is, <laughs> this is my truth, you know, and it's, it's just for me. And that's cool. That's great, you know, but what you're really saying is that's your belief yeah. and you've switched it. Let me give you an example. If I were to say it is my truth that when I plant an apple seed and nourish it and take care of it and water it, make sure it gets plenty of sun, that I will soon have a peach tree. <laughs> it's my truth. And you can't mess with my truth. That's my truth. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. cool. That's your truth. But there's this thing called consequence. Now, you might be able to choose that action, right? You might plant that seed and that's your action, right? Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. But you don't get to choose the consequence that occurs because of that action. 100%. And so, and so that's what ma- sets truth apart from belief. Now, it's important for us to respect other people's beliefs. Yeah. That's important. Okay. We're, we're human beings. None of us are perfect. And it's okay to, for you to have a different belief than me. Mm-hmm. And if we have enough empathy, we should be able to live just fine together. You're right. And, and that's also in and of itself a truth. So, so our goal here is to focus in on truths. Now, why are truths so important? Because when you apply a truth, once you've discovered it, you get the consequence of that truth. Now, here's the cool thing. It's a happy consequence. Hmm. Okay, so let me let me give you an example of that. Um, my my brother, my big brother, he's 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 one of those, you know, secret agent guys now, yeah. and he never. Oh yeah, I mean, he just got back from a a month in uh, Pakistan. Oh, couldn't nice. tell us. Oh yeah, couldn't tell us what he did for a month. <laughs> And in fact, we had like a going away party for him. He's like, I don't know why you're making such a big deal. And we're like, dude, you're going to freaking Pakistan. Right. For for real. Like, (laughs) you know, we were all nervous. So anyway, he got back home just safe. But here's the thing. When he first started in this field, he started out on uh, Border Patrol. And uh, he tried out for Borstar. And the cool thing about Borstar is, is that um, you jump out of planes, you're looking for people who are, or, or out of uh, helicopters, and you're looking for people who are dehydrated in the desert, and you save their lives. It's, oh, wow. Yeah, it's an amazing group of, of uh, people, no, elite group uh, of, of people in, in, that work for the government that nobody knows about, right? Right, yeah. And so uh, he had to learn Spanish. 
in order to even get this. And so not only do you have to go through this crazy boot camp, which is as hard and difficult as you'd see in any oh, army yeah. movie, right? Oh, I can imagine. But in addition to that, he had to learn Spanish. And so his brain and his mind, his thoughts were, geez, I don't know if I can learn Spanish. In fact, he failed the first three Spanish tests. In fact, his professor said, wow, I've never seen anybody <laughs> pass this Borstar thing and fail the first three tests. You might as well quit now. Basically, that's what he was saying. Yeah. Right? And so he started telling himself that his he just he wasn't able. He could not. And, and there's that word that comes out, this word called can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't learn Spanish. Well, what what we most of the time, what we're really saying is, is that we won't. In other words, we won't pay the price for us to learn Spanish. You see, what he had to do is while he was trying to learn Spanish on the weekends, all of his buddies in Borstar Academy were just playing around, joking around on the weekends. And he would study his guts out and pray. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He'd pray like crazy. And uh, he ended up passing uh, the tests and got through Borstar. And it's funny because he said to me, he said, you know, after the most difficult times, uh, I've, I've found the most rewarding times. Yeah. And I just... And I just needed to change my mindset. I needed to stop focusing in on all the negative and I need to be more positive about um, what I'm capable of and stop saying can't. Yeah, 100%. Right, right now I won't because I'm not willing to pay the price. There is no can't. There's only won't. Will yep. or won't? What's your choice? And so um, that negativity versus positivity, it's a truth. When you're positive, you you bring people close to you. Yeah. You you attract them to you. When you're negative, you don't. And so you got to be careful with that. You either you either don't attract them or you attract the wrong people. Oh, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Misery loves company. Absolutely. But but that's some of the truths that I'm talking about. And so what I've been able to do with this second book is is I've been able to collect certain truths based on the pattern for excellence that if you follow them you get the happy consequences and it makes you happy. And that's the motivation to actually do what you know. And that's why we should study truth and not just behavior. And that's what the book is all about. Uh, well, I like it. Uh, and I will be very happy if my call booking board stays full. So that well, yeah. truth that truth will be uh, <laughs> <laughs> making people happy so that they book with us. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's interesting is, is as we teach these principles, CSR say, you know what? You know, you know who really needs this? And they say somebody on their team. That needs it, like the technicians yeah, or the owner. Yeah, yeah. And then once you get to the owner and they go, wow, this is amazing. This is great <laughs> stuff. Do you know who really, really needs this? <laughs> and they say, my wife or my kids or or my distributor or my my uh, manufacturer. Please train them on all these. Anyway. We don't all need this. Just, just the person <laughs> needs it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing everything with us. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap things up? Yeah. So the book is called Patterned After Excellence. Mm -hmm. You can get it on Amazon. The audio version is going to be available very, very soon. In fact, I just submitted it all today. So within the next two to four weeks, you can be listening to it in your car. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, this isn't some nerd reading my book. <laughs> this is me. Yeah. Right, I I, re I read the book, and you'll 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 feel the same enthusiasm, energy that you felt on this podcast. Cool. So you'll love it. Get the book. Very cool. Thank you again for coming on the show, and thank you for everything you've done for our industry and making it a better place to work. Absolutely, absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. So if you're listening to this episode and you found value in it, please please share it. It's no cost to you. The only cost that you may incur is sharing it with a friend, uh, share it with a competitor. Maybe, uh, there are competitors out there that really could use, use that advice and, uh, and including, you know, your friends, if, if you're already doing a perfect job, um, share it with, with someone else too. Um, but anyways, also if you found value in this and you're on Instagram and we're not already friends or if we are friends, just take a screenshot of this, share it in your stories and tag me. Uh, if we're not friends, I'll connect with you um, and uh, we can become Instagram friends or Facebook friends, whatever. And uh, but anyways, just share it. And, and, and that's the biggest thing about this podcast is um, that's the only way that we're going to grow and touch more audience and more small business owners as they're starting their service business. 
Um, with that being said, if you have any questions for myself um, or Brigham, it, just feel free to reach out to me. Uh, most of you, if you listen before, you know my email address is tersh at icebound.us. That's T-E-R-S-H at icebound.us. And, um, and I will get back to you as soon as possible and answer any questions or uh, lead you in the right direction or what I perceive to be the truth and uh, the true direction for you. But anyways, uh, with that being said, thank you again for listening to the Service Business Mastery Podcast, the podcast focused on service business owners, managers, and technicians who are considering becoming business owners themselves. We'll talk again soon.